foremost, the purpose is to defend, okay, and then to also to regain the ball. Uh, the purpose of any defense is to prevent any easy scoring opportunities, okay. Oh, sorry, let's go back. Either to stop easy scoring opportunities and to gain possession of the ball uh, through either interceptions or tackles. So if we look at the press, the press is a strategic is a strategic uh, formation used by the defending team to control space and to limit attacking options for the opposition either in their own defensive zones or ours uh, with, the obje with the objective of regaining possession. Okay, a press strategy can be implemented in any part of the field by the defending team against any opposition, free hit, the set tactical outlet, or sideline hit. So if we start to break it down in terms of the objectives of the press, so number one is to close, close down or deny the opposition space and play access in order to execute a dynamic, effective or offensive transition or to go forward. Uh, to cover the most dangerous area, we talk about the central area uh, and to force opposition wide so that it is difficult to generate direct or penetrating movement through the center channels. Then also we look at through application of both positional, okay, so the different positions. So for instance, what is the position of the center striker? What is the position of the right striker? What is the position of the left striker? What is the position of the high pivot? What is the position of the, the low pivot? And what is the shape of the back three in the field as well? Uh, and then also looking at spatial pressure, okay, are we, are we full pressing or are we zonal as well? Uh, to create turnovers and counterattacks with speed and numerical supremacy going forward. Then number four is to delay or slow the build-up of the opponent as a specific tactical strategy to conserve energy or to break up their preferred playing tempo. So this could also mean in terms of do we drop out into a half court, for instance. Then objective number five is to close down the play, especially the transfer. Okay, in some circumstances it may be to a specific tactical advantage that we want to keep them on one side, okay, and, and not allow them to transfer in the deep defensive right or left, de left defender, for instance. This involves the strikers isolating the ball carriers in one area of the field, midfielders and defenders having the ability to step in front of markers and also win the ball through interceptions or through a desired recovery zone. So this is important when we talk about recovery zones. Where do we want to win the ball? Do you want to win the ball higher in the field, okay, in the center channel? or are we comfortable to win balls in the recovery zones on the outside channels as well? So that's important. When we start to think about it, things that we need to consider, okay, strengths of the team, okay, where do we want to recover the ball, okay, and who do you want to recover the ball? Do you want the, the, the strikers winning the ball, or do you want the midfielders and behind the strikers to win the ball, or do you want the defenders winning the ball? That's important for us to know, and in which recovery zone do we want to win it? Okay, then we must also understand and know the strengths of the opposition. Okay, where are their strengths? Okay, where are their weaknesses? Okay, uh, what area do we want to force them to? And then some factors that we need to also consider, in-game factors, in terms of the timing of the game, the stage of the game. Is it in the first quarter, or are we in the last quarter? Are we one nil down, or are we two one up? You know, what is the game plan here and how do we press? Okay, also players on the pitch, uh, either numbers up, numbers down, uh, either through uh, fatigue or through uh, uh, a green card or yellow card infringement. And then experience we talk about in terms of we've identified the weak players and we know that we've had some success in pressing in that game. At least then we will make sure that we try to continue, continue that theme. So what I've done is I've uh, looked at three different teams and, 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 uh, and pulled out different forms of presses uh, just to give us an idea and we'll, we'll, go th and we'll go through them. So when we look at Australia, so it's important, it's important to understand if you play Australia, who, who's in their team, who are the key players. Okay, I think this is important. You need to know who the defenders are, what skill sets do the defenders have in terms of, 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 of their outlet. And likewise, who's, who's uh, their front three? How do they press? 
okay, what is their midfield shape like as well. So it's important to understand and to know who you play against. It's important to prepare well. So when we look at this, we'll look, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the Aussie press uh, and we'll look at uh, how they set up and where they're looking to try to win the ball. So I will pause it at times just to get the setup, just to get the setup. So what we see, when we see at the moment, uh, Aussie are pressing with the front three. So the center forward is offset slightly. Uh, you've got the right striker, left striker, the high pivot or the setter bid. And then you've got the right, stri right midfielder, left midfielder, left midfielder. And then you've got a free man or the low pivot. And then you've got a zonal back three. They're pressing against an Argentinian back four. So if we play, if we play the clip and continue. So you'll see in this case, what is the recovery zone? Where do we want to win the ball? Clearly the center forward has cut the field. So they, they prevent this bypass. And you can see they zonal in, 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 in the striker line or also in the in midfield line. So if we play it through, Okay, and once the ball once the ball is played live, the center forward puts pressure, center striker puts pressure, and again the recovery zone in this instance is down this outside channel. Again, the midfielder stepped in front, or the free man stepped in front to win the ball in this case, and then they look to launch an attack. Next slide. Just look at the setup again. Center forward again, offset, center forward, right striker. And you'll notice here with the left striker, she's come slightly infield, okay, to take care of one of the Argentinian pivot players in, the, in this role. So the left, stri the left striker is coming to assist the high pivot and to also assist the center, the center forward in this case to take care of that pivot over there. And again, center striker is offset to prevent this bypass ball. Again, zonal in midfield. And you'll see the, the high pivot is now actually the free man or free on the direct line, but they still have a, another free man slightly behind. So if we play it through, If we take it back, so again, zonal, they're preventing any balls being played through the center channel, as we discussed earlier. So the recovery zone is, is, is on the outside. Again, the defenders need to understand that they are either going to intercept the ball and win the ball, or regain possession on the outside channels, and then look to launch an attack. And once they've won the ball, they can then launch an attack to then go forward from there. Look at the next clip. So from the center channel, center striker, and now you'll see a slight difference in terms of the positioning of the two outside strikers. So if we look at the left, the left striker, Aussie striker has also come slightly narrow to take care of this pivot over here. And then you've got the right striker who's come narrow as well to take care or man aware of this pivot in here. And then you have the center striker who's offset. She's offset, so she's not on the direct line. She's offset slightly to help take care and manage this pivot player. And then you've got the, right, uh, the left striker taking care. Now you've also got the, the high pivot on the direct line with the free man behind. And you'll notice the outside midfielders, so the left midfielder has gone slightly wider and the right midfielder is also slightly wider. This is because of the two outside strikers being slightly narrow. 
So this gives you an indication that they are happy for balls to be played to the outside, and then they can press it either on the 45 and then the outside midfielders on the line to pick up the, the ball, and that becomes a recovery zone. But they definitely don't want balls to be played through the center channels by that picture. So it's either, so if we play it through, Again, we see where the recovery zone is quite deep, but also from uh, the left the left defender who's marking zonally, but then also can step in front to then win the ball and then launch an attack going forward. So if we look at this picture, there's a slight difference where you saw in the previous clips where the center forward was either offset to the left or offset to the right. Uh, you'll see the center forward in this case now is on a direct line uh, to, the, to the center back. You'll notice that the, the, left, the left striker is slightly narrow. You've got the right, right, uh, sorry, yeah, right striker and left striker slightly narrow. And then you've got your mid. And you've also got your free man. And then you've got your two outside, two outside midfielders with the high with the height of it. Again, protecting the middle so they're quite zonal as well. So if we play it. So if I take this back and play it through, there's a couple of points that I'd like to highlight here. So center striker approaches on the 45 and you've got the, outs you've got the outside midfielder taking care of the line. And then you'll notice the center forward cuts the field. further sorry so you'll notice in this instance now the center forward cuts the field and she keeps her on that side and then again the recovery zone is deep deep in their half and they want it and then they look to launch an attack If we, look, if we look at this clip, so it doesn't start from an outlet or a restart. So it starts from the side of the field. So again, it's a d another different form of a press. So you'll notice, you'll notice the Australian left striker in this instance is slightly higher. And you'll see that the right, that's the right striker, center striker, and uh, left striker. So you'll see the left striker slightly higher. And the reason being is we call it a cantilever. So it looks to keep the ball on, on Argentinians' left side, uh, Australians' right side. So you'll see as the ball gets transferred or moved, you'll notice the left striker now keeps a her, keeps her player on that side of the field. And as they transfer back, you notice there's pressure from the midfield, and then there's the recovery zone from there. So if we take a lo another look at it, they cut the transfer by dropping the center forward and the right striker and having the outside left striker slightly higher. So they stop the transfer and they keep him on one side. Okay, so I've uh, seen a question that's come through. As a team, how many different types of presses would you have in your tool? 
Uh, are you always adapting based on the team you're playing against? Or are you mostly using the same press all the time? Uh, to answer your question there, you, you need to also understand your team. Uh, what are your team strengths? Uh, yes, I would, like, I would like to have a variety of, of, of press, press types. Uh, but also, it's also dependent on the opposition. So again, uh, doing the, the necessary prep work to understand who are the key players and, and, how, and how, can we deny, how can we deny them or put pressure on them when we, when we, when we don't have the ball. So it's important, it's important to have a variety of presses, but also not, not to lose focus on, on your specific team and also to understand your team in terms of the strengths in the team as well. So if we if we look at uh, Argentina, again, it's just it's important to understand who's who's in their roster. Okay, who you play against on that day? Again, who's playing in the backfield? Who's playing in the midfield line? And uh, who's in the stri who's in the striker line? So if we look at the Argentinian press, and they're pressing uh, Germany. And you'll see it slightly. They have a slightly different style of, of press, where you saw in the in the in the in the Aussie in the Aussie press where the centre forward put a lot of pressure in terms of being you know front on, or being slightly offset, and then you had your two outside strikers slightly slightly narrow. So you'll see with the Argentinian they come with a little bit of a, a, a different different style as well. So if we if we play it through. Again, it's important to understand the playing Germany. So Germany are in a back four, okay, back four, but they've also got some pivot players uh, in the middle. Yeah. So you'll start to recognize this is the outside right, outside right striker, Argentinian right striker. This is the Argentinian left striker, uh, Argentinian center forward. You'll see that she's dropped out. Okay, so she's dropped out of there, and you've got the, the high pivot. Okay, or center mid, if you want to call it that as well. And then you've got the two outside, outside midfielder, uh, right midfield. And then you've got the outside uh, right midfield, uh, left midfield. Why do they do this? They do this because they want to try and prevent balls being played through the middle here, and they want to protect the central channel. Okay, if we go, if we take a closer look at the clip, you'll notice as, as the ball gets transferred, there's pressure from the outside left striker. But it's also important to understand her running line, so she doesn't need to head on. She comes at a slight, at a, at a, a slightly of an arc of an angle. Okay, she tries to keep her on the inside. So she tries to keep her on the inside because she wants these balls being played for either that striker to pick it up or the or the high pivot to pick it up. So she tries, she prevents this pass from, 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 from happening and, and they are comfortable to win ball through the center channel. And it's a pity they didn't get the, it's unlucky they missed the intercept there, but you could see the plan in terms of the outside left striker keeping him on the inside and forcing this pass to be played through the middle. And once they win the ball, they can then obviously then launch an attack. We move on to the next clip. Again, look at the setup. Okay, back four. Outside left striker, right striker, high pivot, and center and center forward.
uh, take a closer look. Again, they want they want to deny balls being played to the outside, and they are comfortable to win ball through 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 the center channels. Again, you might you might you might think to yourself, why did Germany play those balls through through that channel? They could have probably played balls to the outside, or maybe she could have tracked past this ball back out here. She might engage, and then they can play the balls to the outside left defender. And then now uh, they can play the balls on the outside. Okay, that's also an option. But they try to play through the center, and then obviously Argentina have got a high pivot and a center forward in those channels that are comfortable to then win those balls. So if we just look at it from a different a different uh, angle, so it's not from the restart, that's just slightly higher. Now if we start it off, okay, it's also critical to understand what the shape is, what are the Argentinian strikers trying to do. So if we look in this case, you've got the right strike on the direct line. You've got the you've got the high pivot, the midfielder. You've got the outside outside left midfield. You've got your center forward who's dropped to take care of any balls played through the middle. But then you've also got your outside outside striker a little bit higher. So this is a left striker in this instance. And as the ball gets played. She puts some blind side pressure. So as she comes in again, it's also important to look at the angle of approach. Okay, so it's not direct at her. So it's not on the direct line. So she doesn't run at her here. She comes from the outside with some blind side pressure. Okay, to encourage her to either try to play back that side or to either get her head down and she has to then try to run herself out of pressure. Because she also denies this pass from happening from the transfer to this player over here. So it's important to understand the angle of approach, how do we approach, and also what are we trying to do? What is the purpose? We're trying to force these balls through the center channel because we know we have uh, a center striker and also we have a, a, high, a high pivot in, 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 in that role. And as you'll notice, it's pressure and now she's running at the center forward. And when they win the ball, they can then go forward from there. So if we look at it slightly different. So it's again, it's important to understand the setup. What are they trying to achieve? And you'll notice, and you'll notice in this setup, you'll see the Argentina start to drop out. Yeah, so if we take it back, it's also important to understand that okay, Argentina are dropping out. Why are they dropping out? Either because of the scoreline or because of the tempo of the game. And they feel maybe Germany are a bit of a threat in terms of uh, passing balls through the middle because this is a different game. So they decide to drop out into a half court, okay, a half court zonal. And what is the purpose of a, of a, of a half court zonal? Maybe to let the opposition come at us. And once we win the ball, because you have to close the middle really tight, uh, and you have to be aware of players in the different zones. And once you win the ball, do they have the speed up front? And I think if you look, if you, if you, if you, if you look at the Argentinian uh, style of play, they do have some quick players, uh, like Kolar uh Granata, they got Albertaro, who are really quick uh, and very skillful and they can take on players on a one-on-one -on -one battle. So maybe that's also 
why they drop out to try to create more space for them to also attack into. So you could see the different styles. So you saw in the previous clips where the center forward dropped and they, they still had the two outside strikers slightly higher. In this clip here, we see them drop out in a half court. And as we play it, they look to protect the middle of the field. It gets important. And then when they shift, they shift together. So again, to keep, to keep the middle compact. And you can see they've dropped the center forward as well. And they protect the middle. So if we move on to the next one. And I just want to take it back because you'll notice in the previous clips where the center forward dropped out, Argentina center forward was deeper. And you'll see in this clip now, She's slightly higher, she's on the five, putting full pressure. And again, offset, why is she offset? Uh, they're playing Australia. Australia have a, have a pivot player in here and they have another pivot player in there. You can see Argentina are, they zonal, okay? Zonal in terms of their defense. But if we play it through, Okay, so if we take it back, the reason why I put this in here is because the press starts off well in terms of pressure, but I think it's important that every line needs to understand what is happening. So what is my role as the striker? What is my role as the outside striker? In this case here, it's, it's Granata as a right striker, and it's a tactic that they've used. They said, well, the right striker will close the line. Okay, but it's important then if the right striker closes the line, it's important that the right midfielder then stays infield and it's also important that the right defender also communicates this and you'll see it's important to be man aware because if you're not man aware and balls do get played on the inside and we're not aware of man that's on the inside of us you know we, we open up opportunities like this for teams to then be able to go forward so it's important to get to understand the role of each individual in terms of the pressing angle and pressing line. So in this case, the right striker does a good job in keeping and keeping and keeping uh, the ball to the inside channel. Okay, so it's, it's, it's important that the, uh, the midfielder must recognize what is the outside striker doing. And then I need to then also protect that, 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 that outside striker in terms of uh, understanding and doing my role uh, to the best of my ability. And you'll see just in this clip, uh, they get the timing wrong. And if you get the timing wrong at, at an international level, you know, good, good teams will, 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 will capitalize on your, on your error. If they do a good job at the end. That becomes then their recovery zone from being broken in field. I see there's a question that's come through. Uh, most, most of your clips feature strikers and midfielders, uh, most predominantly. What roles does the back line play in, apply, in applying the press? I think it's important. The, back, the backfield, in terms of understanding what, what, is, what is the team pressing like, and also they need to understand that if, if uh, you also need to understand which players you're playing against because you know that these players could throw the aerial, the long ball, so you need to, you need to stay focused and in tune and stay connected. With the front six, so let's say the front six is the front, the, the, the three strikers and the, and the three midfielders. So it's important to understand that that that, uh, that uh, collaboration is is connected as well, so that we can intercept long balls if ball if balls are played there, if uh, balls are played down the outside channels, or if the aerial aerial long ball is 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 is, is going to be played. So it's important that the the backfield also understands. Uh, what is happening and also you'll see in certain clips that the backfield is either zonal as well but in front okay it's important that they're in front that they can actually 
to intercept those balls. If they're not in front, it becomes difficult because then they have to then defend those balls. But if they, def if they are in front from the start, it's easier to manage, manage the, 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 the high ball, but also easier to manage the, the intercept if the ball does get played. So it's important that the back line is also connected with the, with the midfield and the striker line. See, there's another question as well. What do you think the most important individual skill to learn to be effective in the press, or would you consider it to be purely a team skill? No, I think it's, it's, impo it's important to understand if you're pressing uh, in terms of your ability to, to win ball. And how do I win ball? I can put pressure with a jab tackle. I can win ball either through a flat stick tackle. I can either win ball up front with an upright, upright stick tackle. And also it's important uh, if you're pressing, if you are the pressing striker, understanding the relationship between acceleration and deceleration. So we accelerate to try to get close, but then also decelerate that we don't get beaten. If a defender either does an outside pull or an inside pull and she eliminates, uh, eliminates you easy. So it's important to have that discipline between uh, acceleration, deceleration, okay? And then my angle of approach and where do I want to keep and where do I want to keep the opposition? And if I am beaten, then I must turn, head down, reverse, reverse pressure. That's important. So if we take a, if we take another look at uh, so we we'll look at Germany and we we'll look at how they they press again same process again understand who the players are uh, and where the strengths are and where the weaknesses are as well. So if we play through this clip. And I'm going to pause it here. So leading back to the question of individual skills. So if you look at the German, the German mindset, if you really see pressing is about, is about, is about, is about body language. Uh, so you can see they start to make themselves look big. Okay. And they've also got their sticks in the air to also discourage, to discourage the, the, the overhead pass. Okay. But it's, it's, it's also perceiving, uh, making sure that the opposition perceive the pressure in terms of them making themselves look big there. Look at the body language. And if we take this back. So it's important to look at the starting position. In this instance, you've got the center forward on the direct line. Or she's offset slightly. You've got the right, you've got the left striker slightly narrow. You've got the high pivot or the mid mid high pivot. And then you've got, and then you've got uh, the right, the right striker, and you've got the outside, outside right midfield. In this case here, you've got the outside left midfield, and then you've got your free man in front. Here's your free man, and then you've got the backfield. And this is when we start to talk about the backfield in terms of they're not man to man; they're quite zonal, zonal but central. So they understand that if balls are played, they can win those balls. You'll see behind here, there's an Argentinian striker. On the 25, and you've got a, a German defender who's probably about 10 meters ahead of her. Uh, but she's comfortable. She knows that she needs to stay connected with the, the striker line. What is the striker line doing? Okay, do I have a, a free man in front of me? But also, if balls are played direct, I can then still win the ball. So and you'll see it in this, and, and you'll see it in this instance as it gets played. So they try to play through the middle, Argentina. Play through the middle. Again, there's an intercept in front so this is where we talk about the intercept mentality so we are comfortable to win the ball from deep the deep recovery zone and once they win the ball here they can now start to launch their attack so going back to that question as well hopefully this answers it in terms of the the backfield need to stay connected with the with, with, the, with the midfielders and strikers Again, look at the look at the German setup, center forward uh, on a slanter or on, on the on the angle. You've got now you've still got the sticks in the air. Okay, that perception. You've got the, the high pivot. High pivot is on the direct line. Why is she on the direct line? 
because the center striker has offset. Why is the center striker offset? Because of these two pivots that are in here. And then you'll have the left striker slightly narrower as well. And you'll have the right striker also slightly narrower just to help take care of the pivot and to help take care of the pivot in here. And then you still have your free man. And you've got your outside midfielder. You've got your outside midfielder. And you'll see that they've dropped slightly deeper because also they're scared of the aerial threat. So they're able to then intercept if the ball is thrown. Okay, so they're not too high. And then you've got in the backfield marking, man, man away in the backfield here. And then you've got your free man. And if we play it, the free man ends up picking the ball. And then from here, they can then look to launch an attack. And I'm going to take it back just to the start. Why are these why are these two outside strikers narrow? Because they're happy, they're happy for balls to be played to the outside and then they can manage that. But for them, their first priority is to look, make sure that they congest the midfield channel. And that's important. I think it's important to understand that you, you cannot cover the middle and the outside at the same time. So it's important to understand that if we're gonna close the middle, that we, we close the middle well. Uh, if we're gonna close the outside, then we have to then close the outside. But you can't do two jobs at the same time. I think that's important. Okay, we look at the body language. Okay, why does this happen? If we take it to the start of the clip, Again, we look at the perceived pressure. We look at the body language, the sticks in the air. We look at the body language of the center forward, body language of the outside left striker, right striker, high pivot, okay, outside uh, left midfield, uh, right midfield, and then you've got your, your free man, and then you've got your outside, outside right D and your center D. And again, so you look at the body language, the intent, close the middle first. Okay, it's, that's their job, close the middle first. And then once the ball gets transferred, it's also about energy. And look at the pressure that comes from the outside striker, right striker, left striker. Okay, left striker puts pressure on the right D. We'll also have a look at the left midfielder now. Uh, slides across to take care of the line ball because the outside striker is now pressing on the 45. So it makes it very difficult for balls to be then played back. If the ball gets transferred, it's very difficult for the ball to then get played back on the 45 on the inside because the left striker, if the left striker does a really good job, she puts under pressure and then she can only play the outside, the outside, the outside line ball. And then in this position here, you then will have either a left midfield picking up the line ball, but also look at the relationship that's also happening in the backfield here, where the left D also now also starts to slide across the the free man also comes across to take care if balls are played down, down, down that uh, down that channel. Again, coming across to assist, the center D will then jump in front. And as the ball comes, now you have the left midfielder who's now free and on the line to then win that ball if it get, does get played. Because this ball into this player is quite difficult if, again, if the left striker does a really good job in putting the right defender under pressure and pressure on the right line, on the right angle. Okay, and look at the setup. Center striker slightly offset. 
center striker slightly offset. You've got your right striker, left striker slightly deeper. Okay, there's, there is an aerial threat. There's, uh, so there's the, right, the left striker drop slightly on the on the half side, and you'll see again the the left D, the left mid is dropped slightly as well, as okay, so a zonal. And then you've got your high you've got your high pivot, and then you've got your left midfield, right midfield, sorry, right midfield. Again, she's got a stick in the air, okay, to try offset, uh, or offset this player here in terms of the or to discourage the high ball. And then you still got your right, you got your right, right D, and then you got your free man. So if we play it through, and as the ball gets thrown, you got your free man then picking up the high ball in that zone already. So you can really see there's a high ball. And again, if we take it back, just to give you a little bit more clarity that's why this right striker and that's why this left uh, sorry that's why this left uh, striker and left uh, left mid have dropped slightly because they know of the aerial threat okay and as the ball gets played again that's a relationship again we speak about the backfield being connected as well and the free man then wins the ball in this case and then they can look to then launch an attack going forward. Okay, if we look at the setup again, And body language, offset, center forward. Body language of the uh, right, uh, right striker. The high pivot. So the high pivot now comes on this direct line because the center forward is offset. And then you've got uh, your right midfielder. You've got your left midfield. You've got your free man. And then look at it in the backfield. You've Got your marking defender. You got your center D uh, zonal and in front. So again, you've got an Argentinian striker behind, and then you've and then you've got your left, your left, your left D. Yeah, so if we go to the start of this clip, once the ball gets transferred to the right D, as it gets transferred, you'll see the, right, the, the left strike is trying to keep her or trying to press on the 45 to keep her down the line. You'll see the left midfielder goes to the line but the right D is able to play this ball through through the back stick of the of the uh, left striker, and then it's important now to understand. Yes, presses are going to be broken. Uh, it's important how we recognize and how do we solve the issue then in behind. So as the ball gets played, okay, and then the Argentinian striker picks the ball up. Okay, it's this understanding in the relationship now of pressing back. But also you'll see how they squeeze this Argentinian player into a pocket, and then you have a then you have your free defender or it's a defender left D comes infield to make the tackle, and then you still got your last man who holds on the direct line, so she doesn't go to the outside. Okay, to pick up that player, she stays she stays on the inside she stays on the inside and on the direct line route to goal, uh, and 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 waits for her teammates then to make that tackle then. So they've still organized, they've done it really well and managed it quite well in terms of, yes, they, did, they try to press them from the top of the field, but the ball got played through the press. Okay, but it doesn't mean that we all panic now because the ball's being played through the press. Okay, everyone still has their role to do with the midfield or the, the backfield. 
and they managed it quite well in terms of actually getting numbers back and managing the situation. And then from here, they've regained the ball again. The recovery zone is now not high in the field, but their recovery zone was over the 25. So if we look at it, and going back to the question, you, it's important to identify how you want to press against the opposition. Uh, it's important to understand the recovery zones where you want to win the ball. Uh, it's, it's also important where you want to win it. And also, you must be a, adaptable to change okay, according, according, to what the, uh, according to what the opposition are doing as well but also not taking away your strengths and what you've prepped as well. But it's important to, to, to be adaptable and to fix things when things happen uh, during, during the game. Uh, so if we just look at, if we just look at, uh, I think there's one more question. When teams, when teams set up to press, is it audible cue that someone yells or is it something everyone knows or is going? So I think it's important. So it's, it's, it's difficult to, to try a setup and then all of a sudden you need to change it. So I, th I think team, teams know how they want to press and they have an idea. And it's important. And I think the way that teams can change it is they understand, oh, if we're pressing a back four, yes, we need to, ch we need to, we, we, we need to press a certain, certain way. But if we're pressing a, a back three, we need to press slightly different. And what will happen is teams will, teams will flow into a back three, back four, or a back five. And that's when you need to understand to, to take your different cues. So teams must understand how we're pressing a back four. Also, teams must also understand how they're pressing a back three or a back five. And teams must understand also together, okay, we were going to drop out here because we're going to drop out into a half court because of the scoreline or because maybe we're running out of legs or because we, we're numbers down. So I think th those are your cues to understand, okay, when we need to change. But you must be able to change. But if you, if you haven't trained it or have an idea of how you want to press, it's very difficult, it's very difficult to change it if you don't know. I think that's uh, the last question. I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Ah, there's another one here. Also, who's in charge of the formation typically? Is it the coach, coach's job to be intuitive instruction or specific player position? I think it's a combination of both. I think uh, as coaches, we also allow players to also uh, make adaptations on the field uh, because they also see it from a, from a different lens, from a different view. Whereas some coaches, if you're on the side of the field on the, in, in, in the benches, you see it from a different view as opposed to them seeing it from a different view. So I think players will also, will also look to give players some responsibilities in terms of, 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 seeing, of seeing the game slightly different. And then they must, then they must communicate that to the playing group in terms of, hey, we've changed it and they understand, understand those, those cues. So is it coach-led? Yeah, part of it is coach-led, but it's also athlete-led as well in terms of being adaptable on the field because they see it from a different, from a different perspective as well. And then you can always, you can always discuss during, during the, 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 the quarter break or the halftime break. Okay, and there's another question here. As you highlighted, th as you highlighted the three teams that you used that you used press well are there other teams that you recommend to watch to see good presses as well uh, yeah i think i think every 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 team uh, you know has has a different style of press uh, i think it's also good to also look at you know the the uh, the dutch the 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 the, the dutch uh, the dutch team they're number one in the world and they're number one in the world for 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 a reason so they also have uh, different styles of press. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, good, it's good to have a look at, 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 at different teams and to understand. Also good to have a look at uh, sort of the Asian teams like China, uh, Japan, you know, India. They'll also come with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, a different uh, style as well. Uh, but uh, if we look predominantly, the ones that you saw where the center forward offset quite, uh, offset quite a bit and there were two pivots, that's, that's a general trend that, that happens, in, especially in women's hockey. Uh, that the center forward does offset to help to help take care of the, the one screen or pivot player, and then you've got then the high the high the high pivot on the direct line. That's that's a common theme that we that we see quite a bit in 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 in, in women's hockey around the world. And then the cantilever, the one where the outside outside striker will will put blindside pressure. That's also common, especially when hits are are, are side are sideline hits, and uh, not necessarily from from the restart. 
okay, and teams look to keep sides on 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 one particular in one particular area. So that 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 you'll see quite a bit. Uh, but for sure, if you look at different teams, different teams will come up with different different um, press options. Hopefully, that's given you an idea of of different types of presses and different styles. Uh, but like I said, there's there, there's so much out there. I think it's important to understand what you what first and foremost your team your individual players what they can bring to the game and then what type of press or presses uh, will will benefit the team in the long run and then also the ability to train those presses and to go through those presses is also important so hopefully that was it gave you a little bit of insight uh, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, again you're more than welcome to 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 send me an email i'm i'm, I'm I'm happy to communicate. You got my email uh, details. Uh, yeah, so if you have time and you and you want to talk more hockey, um, I'm more than willing to talk hockey. So please, if you have any further questions, if I didn't uh, touch any other topics that you that you that you would like, please uh, drop me an email, and we can always we can always arrange a moment to 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 talk to talk hockey, especially over this time over Zoom. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. Great, thank you so much, uh, Patrick. <clears throat> I really appreciate it, and and obviously great um, to have you talking over those clips. I'm sure everyone uh, really appreciated that. So thank you very much. Uh, just to note for everybody else, um, we'll be archiving this video on our YouTube page either tomorrow or beginning of next week, and then uh, yeah, we'll be doing we'll be doing this uh, season of five episodes over the next. Um, five weeks. Uh, yeah, so there was there was a lot of demand to uh, kick kick it back into gear. So we're excited to bring you um, more webinars as the um, yeah as this month goes on. So uh, please feel free to register next week. Uh, Hugh Purvis from the Men's uh, Next Gen program will be talking a bit about the uh, transition, I believe. So he'll sort of be building off of what Patrick was talking about today. So thanks very much, everybody, and we'll see you next week.